Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about probability with counting principles. Uh, so we learned about counting principles in our last video, uh, the multiplication principle, combinations, and permutations. So really all we're doing today is we are adding probability. Um, so there's not really any new concepts, really. Uh, we already know about probability, number of elements in the event divided by the number of elements in the sample space. So now we're just going to be using the multiplication principle, per permutations and combinations to find those numbers of elements. So anyway, so all we're going to do today is look at some examples that some students find fairly challenging. So we'll start off with uh, mixed in a drawer are four blue, two white, and 10 gray socks. If two socks are selected at random, what is the probability that they are the same color? So we can kind of picture a, a drawer where there's a bunch of socks thrown in there. They're not paired up. And we're just going to randomly select two. We want to know what's the probability those socks just happen to match. So in this problem, there's a couple different ways the socks could match. They could match and be blue, or they could match and be white, or they could match and be gray. And so we have some options here. So for each of these options, we're going to need a separate combination. In this case, combination, because it doesn't matter what order we select the socks in. If I select a blue sock, then a white sock, or a white sock, and then a blue sock, it doesn't matter. The socks don't match either way. I can't rearrange them and, and make it match. So, uh, so anyway, so we'll be dealing with combinations. So we'll have a combination for the blue, a combination for the white, and then a combination for the gray socks. All right, so for the blue combination, remember that n and r, um, the first and second number in a combination, n is the number of uh, objects we have to select from, r is the number of objects we want to select, and they need to refer to the same type of object. So here, with our socks, uh, with the blue socks, we have four of them, and if we want matching blue socks, we want two. So that would be combination for two. For the white socks, there are two of them. And if we want a matching pair, we need both of them. So combination two, two. The gray socks, we have 10 of those. And we want, if we want matching socks, then we need two of those. So combination 10, two. All right, and that's going to be divided by the total number of elements in the sample space. So the total number of elements in the sample space is going to be the total number of ways in which we could select two socks. And so our denominator has nothing to do with what colors they are. The denominator is simply how many socks are there, which is 16. So combination 16. Uh, so four, bl four blue, two white, 10 gray, that's 16. And then how many are we going to draw? And that's 2. So remember, the n and the r need to agree. So 16, 2, that's 16 socks. We want to draw two socks. In the numerator, combination 4, 2, that's we have four blue socks. We want to select two blue socks. So any of those combinations, the numbers inside both refer to the same type of object. Now, here's kind of the tricky part. Um, Previously, uh, in our previous video, we always multiplied combinations together, but that's not necessarily always going to be the case. Sometimes we'll multiply them. That's when we have the multiplication principle. That is when we are doing each of uh, the things. So if we multiply it here, which I'll write it out, but we're going to erase it, that would say I want to select two blue socks and two white socks and two gray socks. So in our example we looked at last time where we were drawing uh, some clubs and some spades, we multiplied those two combinations together because we wanted to draw the clubs. I think it was two clubs and two spades. So we multiplied them together. But here, we don't want two blue socks and two white socks and two gray socks because that's six socks. That's too many socks. We don't need that many. Uh, so instead, we want to draw two blue socks or two white socks, or two gray socks. So we are going to be adding the numbers in the numerator. So again, the difference is if the numerator, uh, or and this works not only just in probabilities, but just in, in regular um, counting situations, if 
the combinations, if we want to do all of them, if we want to do this one and this one and this one, then we multiply. If we have options, that's when we're going to add. So here we have options. It could be blue or it could be white or it could be gray. So and is multiply or is add. Now, I'm not saying those words are going to appear in the problem. Uh, in fact, the word or does not appear in this problem, but we know by reading the problem that we need two blue socks or two white socks or two gray socks. So anyway, uh, combination four, two, that's six. Combination two, two, that's one. And then combination 10, two, that's 45. And then combination six, 16, two, that's 120. So that gives us 52 out of 120, and that would be our probability. Uh, and again, we don't have to reduce fractions in this unit, so we could just leave our answer right like that. All right, let's look at another example. In this example, a lottery requires that you select six different numbers from one to 50. Six are selected at random as the winning numbers. What is the probability that you select four of the six winning numbers? All right, so notice we're not trying to get all six winning numbers. It's actually easier to calculate uh, that, that probability, um, but we only want four of the six. So first thing we wanna think about here is does order matter? Now there's nothing in this problem that would tell us that order matters. And in fact, in the lottery, the order uh, of the numbers does not matter. If you go to a, a gas station, buy a lottery ticket, and you give them your numbers, they're just gonna print them off in numerical order. So uh, anyway, uh, so order does not matter here, which tells us that we're dealing with combinations. All right, so let's go ahead and draw out our fraction. Let's go ahead and start with our denominator. Um, that's often an easy place to start. So our denominator is going to be a combination. So the denominator would be the total number of numbers we have to select from and the total number we want to select. The fact that we want four of the six to be winning numbers is completely irrelevant for uh, figuring out what the denominator is. So the denominator, uh, we have 50 numbers to choose from, and you're supposed to select six of those. So that's combination 56. All right, um, our numerator, so what we want to think of now is how are we distinguishing things? So in the previous example, we were distinguishing based on color. Pretty easy. Blue, white, gray. Those were our three colors. Those were how we were distinguishing different uh, socks from one another. So in the lottery, how are we distinguishing numbers from one another? So anytime we're counting, we have to be able to distinguish one type of object from another type of object. And it's really important to think through that. And that's really the hardest part of this problem is coming up with how we're distinguishing things. Sometimes it's going to be really obvious. Color, for example, is really obvious. Um, there's an example in the homework where um, there's, a, I think, a committee of teachers and students. So we can distinguish based on your status, whether you're a teacher or whether you're a student. Um, in this particular problem, the way we are distinguishing numbers is we have two different types of numbers. We have, uh, so it says six are selected as the winning numbers. So that is one type of number, winning numbers. So then what would the other type of numbers be? So the first is going to be winning. So if they're not winning numbers, then they are losing numbers. And so all of the numbers that are not winning numbers are losing numbers because we're only distinguishing between whether they're winning numbers or losing numbers. All right, so we're going to have two combinations here because we have two different types of objects we want to select because we want four of the six winning numbers. Now, if we wanted six of the six winning numbers, we'd only have one combination because we'd only have one type of object, just winning numbers. But here... If four of the six are winning numbers, that means two of the six are losing numbers. So again, we have to kind of assume some things. Uh, in the last video, we looked at an example that asked for uh, the number of ways to get a five card hand that had two clubs and two spades. Well, we knew by it saying that, that that really meant two clubs and two spades and one other card. So we kind of had to read into it. Same idea here. 
this could read, what is the probability that you select four of the six winning numbers and two of the losing numbers from the number of losing numbers, which we'll talk about here in just a second. Anyway, all right, so our combination for winning numbers. So how many winning numbers are there? Well, it says six are selected at random as the winning numbers, so there are six of them. And then how many of them do we want? We want four of them. So combination six, four. We have six winning numbers. We want four winning numbers. So both of those numbers refer to winning numbers. All right, now we want the losing numbers. So how many losing numbers are there? Well, if there's 50 numbers and six of them are winning numbers, then the rest are losing numbers. And so that would be 44 of them. So we're, we're just breaking this into two groups, winning numbers and losing numbers. So we know how many winning numbers there are, and that tells us how many losing numbers there are, just 50 minus six. And then how many losing numbers do we want? We want two, because we want a total of six numbers. And so if four are winning numbers, then we need two losing numbers. That adds together to give us our six total numbers. Likewise, we have six winning numbers. We have 44 losing numbers, and those add up to the total numbers, number of numbers that we have. So you'll notice kind of a pattern here. We're taking the 50 total numbers in the denominator, and we're splitting it up into six winning and 44 losing. And then we're taking the six numbers we're selecting and we're breaking that up into four winning and two losing. You're gonna see this a lot, where you have a couple combinations in the numerator and a combination in the denominator. Very, very common. Uh, so just, um, just be aware of that. You're gonna see it a lot. All right, so now we have to think about, do we want to multiply or add these combinations in the numerator? In other words, do we want four winning numbers or two losing numbers? Or do we want four winning numbers and two losing numbers? And the answer is and. We need both the winning numbers and the losing numbers because we're supposed to select six. So if we need six, that means we need four winning and two losing numbers to get our six. All right, so combination six, four is 15. And then combination 44, two is 946. When we multiply those together, we get 14,190. And then 50 combination six is 15,890,700. So that's our probability of selecting, of getting six or four of the six winning numbers. Um, if you just randomly selected six numbers from one to 50. So the, the, I think the most common mistake I see here is doing just this part, finding the number of ways to get your four winning numbers from the six winning numbers and then dividing that by the total number. So combination 56 and leaving off the combination 44 two, because all we're asked about is the four winning numbers. But we know that means four winning numbers and two losing numbers. And we always have to account for everything. So just like in our last video, we accounted for the two clubs and the two spades and the one other card. Even though the other card wasn't specified, we knew we needed five cards and it only told us what it wanted four of them to be. So we have to account for everything. So make sure when you're working these problems, you're accounting for everything that needs to be selected. All right, let's move on to the next one. In the game of blackjack, each player is dealt two cards. We wanna know what is the probability that first you're dealt a three and a jack, and second, you're dealt a three and a jack from the same suit. Now, these look pretty similar, but they're actually pretty different. Um, and there's a couple questions in the homework that are going to look fairly similar. And so hopefully this will help you solve those. All right, let's start off with you are dealt a three and a jack. So let's start off with our denominator. So we're um, drawing two cards from a deck of 52. So that is combination 52, two. We have 52 cards in the deck, and we want to select two of them. 
Um, all right, so then the numerator, we want a three and a jack. That's two different types of objects, three and a jack. So we need two different combinations. So a combination for the three and then a combination for the jack. Now, we don't care what suit they're in. So for the threes, our first number should be how many of those are there? And there are four of them. And then our second number should be how many of those do we want? And so we want one of them because we're being asked to find the probability of being dealt a, a three and a jack. All right, so then for the jack combination, there are four of those and we want one of the four. So again, combination for one. And we will multiply those together because we want to be dealt the three and the jack, not the three or the jack. All right, so when we multiply those together, uh, combination four, one is four. So four, one times four, one, that's four times four gives us 16. Uh, and then combination 52, two is 1,326. All right, let's move on to the uh, second part of our problem. You are dealt a three and a jack from the same suit. All right, so now we're distinguishing based on two characteristics. So on the previous part, we were distinguishing based on rank. So three and jack, those are ranks of cards. So cards can be um, distinguished on three characteristics, their color, their suit, or their rank. So in part one, we were distinguishing based solely on rank. On part two, we're now distinguishing on rank and on suit, which is why the second part gets pretty tricky. All right, so let's start with the suit. So let's start with diamonds, uh, because we could get the three and jack of diamonds. So what is, or in how many ways can that happen? All right, so three and jack. All right, so to get three, the three of diamonds, uh, there is only one of those. And if we want the three and jack of diamonds, then we want that one three of diamonds. The jack, uh, there is one of those. And again, if we want the three and jack of diamonds, we want that one card. So both of those are combination one, one. And if we want the three of diamonds and the jack of diamonds, we would multiply those two combinations together. So combination one, one times combination one, one. So that's for diamonds. And then for hearts, we will again have a combination for the three and a combination for the jack. So combination one, one for the three, because again, there's one three of hearts. And if we want the three and jack of hearts, we need that one card. And then for the jack, there's one jack of hearts and we want that one card. We'd multiply those together because uh, we want the three of hearts and the jack of hearts. All right, so then we have, uh, let's see, spades. And you're probably noticing a pattern here. All of these are gonna be the exact same. It's gonna be combination one, one for the three times combination one, one for the jack. Uh, and then the last one, uh, we have clubs. Uh, so that is, uh, let's see, we need combination for the three, combination for the jack, combination one, one for the three, uh, times combination one, one for the jack. All right, so now what are we going to do with these four different sets of combinations? Well, we want the three and jack from the same suit, but it doesn't give us a specific suit, so we have options. It could be diamonds or hearts or spades or clubs. And so since we have options, we're going to add those sets of combinations together. Our denominator will be combination 52, two, because again, we have 52 cards and we're being dealt two cards. The numerator there, combination one, one is just one. So we have one times one times plus one times one plus one times one plus one times one, which gives us four out of uh, 1,326. So that four, we actually could have done that without all of those combinations, um, but I wanted to show you the math. Uh, but we could have figured out that to get a three and jack from the same suit, there's only one way to do it for each suit. 
it in only four ways total. If I want a three and a jack, I could get the three and jack of diamonds, or the three and jack of hearts, or the three and jack of spades, or the three and jack of clubs. Those are the only four options. And so, um, so we could have just counted those out rather than using combinations, but we can use combinations as well. All right, let's move on to the next part. Three names are placed on a ballot in random order. We want to know what is the probability that they are not in alphabetical order. So alphabetical order, so let, let's actually pause here and talk about alphabetical order for, or, or just order in general here for a minute. So alphabetical order uh, is specifically in the order that the alphabet goes in, A, B, C, D, E, F, so forth and so on. Numerical order can actually be two things. So uh, for example, the numbers one, two, three, four, five, that set of numbers is in order. The set of numbers five, four, three, two, one, those are also in order. One of those orders is ascending, one of those orders is descending, but they are both in order. So the reason why I'm saying this is because in the homework, you're gonna have some problems that will ask you about things being in order. And when we're talking about numbers, things can always be in ascending order or descending order. So always make sure to account for both. All right, but alphabetical order, there's only one. Uh, if we reverse the order, we call it reverse alphabetical order. So, all right, so now let's work this problem out. So three names are placed on the ballot in random order. What is the probability that they are not in alphabetical order? Now, often in probability, it's easier to find the opposite of the correct answer first and uh, use that to find the correct answer. So rather than finding what's the probability that the names are not in alphabetical order, let's find the probability that they are in alphabetical order. So first of all, we know we're going to be dealing with permutations because uh, order matters here. Um, because we see the word order twice in the problem, but also just because if we rearrange names on a ballot, then that changes the way the ballot looks, and so that means order matters. Not necessarily that it's important to someone, but just that it matters. All right, so um, let's start off with the denominator for this probability. It's a permutation. So the first number is how many names do we have to put on the ballot, and that is three. And then the second number is how many of those names do we want to arrange on the ballot? And that is also three. We want to arrange all of the names on the ballot. We don't want to leave anybody's name off. All right, numerator. Uh, and again, what we're looking for here is the probability that they are in alphabetical order. So we're going to use that to find the probability that they're not in alphabetical order. So the numerator here is actually pretty easy uh, because it is how many alphabetical orders are there and that is one. There is only one alphabetical order. So if you have three names, there is only one specific ordering of those names that is alphabetical order. Now we can make that into permutations if we wanted to. We could write permutation one, one, but that's just one. So it's the same. So permutation one, one is one. Permutation three, three is six. So the probability that they are in alphabetical order is one out of six. So then what would be the probability that they are not in alphabetical order? Well, that's just one minus the probability that they are in alphabetical order. And so that is five sixths. So in other words, out of the six orders, one is in alphabetical order, the other five are not. So five out of the six ways we can order those names are not in alphabetical order. So again, this is one of those examples where it's easier to find the opposite of the correct answer and use that to find the correct answer. So that's it for today's video. I will see you next time.